Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Danny Dot Podcast number 14. This is a July special, bringing it to you on a Wednesday so that you have got three days to get ready for July. How's everyone been? What's the goss? <laughs> um, I am going to be honest, I'm actually using the soundboard that my brother got me for my birthday. It's been a hot six weeks, but I had seven pages of instructions to learn. And I'm not even sure how this is going to sound. Like, <laughs> I'm very aware that I am wearing headphones and this is really something that's far beyond my technology threshold. So I apologize. Don't stress. Don't readjust anything, guys. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> But hey, um, I was, uh, I feel like I've played this podcast out in my mind about three or four times. It's just one of those things where I was like, what's my 14th podcast? And I know I say that every time because it is a spontaneous thing. This is just a hobby, it's not a profession. So obviously, these topics don't just come out of thin air. But I was thinking, oh my gosh, it's 1st of July on Saturday. What a fabulous way to get all my Danny Dot supporters you know, ready, set up for success, a couple of ideas planted in your wee brains, how we can do July and have a bit of fun with it. So here we go. This is the fruition that came from my brain. (laughs) The notepad that I'm currently looking at where I've jotted down over the past couple of days is full. So I hope everyone takes something away from this. There is a lot of information and I feel like, I don't want to say it, but there's kind of like a shopping list. (laughs) There is, but there isn't. So um, bear with me. I hope everyone's had a great couple of days. I know I threw out my last pod on Friday and it's kind of quick that the next one's here, but um, who cares? I'm having fun. (laughs) So what's everyone been up to? I myself have been a busy little bunny. I rejigged the budget to make sure that this fortnight didn't go into negatives. I don't allow myself to go into negatives. I just didn't sort of budget for some things that kind of came up last fortnight, like me being uh, a bit of a pub rat. <laughs> but um, I can consciously say that we are doing a lot better this pay. And that's, I even went out on Friday and I just yeah, had a couple of glasses of wine and didn't end up spending the whole budget. So yay me. Um, it is working well. I do see this as, you know, how we're going to, how I'm going to do this moving forward, which I'm super excited about. I've got Auckland in less than a month. And that's what I'm actually budgeting for is that is one of the four trips coming up. So, um, yeah, we're going okay. And I feel like because it's still New Zealand that I'm going to with a good friend of mine, Bestie, well, <laughs> it's not going to be too hard just to keep the currency like normal. It's once you start going to another country and you've got to take into the consideration like the exchange rates and everything else, that's when you're like, oh my God, I haven't saved enough or, oh yeah, I saved enough. <laughs> So, um, yeah, look, Auckland in less than a month. It'll be easy. It's two days. We can do this. I'm fine. (laughs) Um, Other than that, I wanted to sort of pop in here that the 1st of July is in New Zealand, the start of dry July. I give massive applause to those that can do it. Um, I am not doing it. I've actually been asked to host or MC an event here in Cromwell. So uh, they will be paying me in wine. (laughs) I'm not sad about it. Sad, not sad. Um, But also on the 1st of July, it is International Joke Day. I want to hear your best jokes on the 1st of July. Pop them in the Spotify thing. Just flick them through. I tell you, I am always down for a good giggle. And I have seen some... Not so much jokes recently, but um, as I say, I have told you all that I've been exactly on Tinder for a week and the jokes or the one-liners coming through there are hysterical. I'm telling you, some of these guys, they're going places and I don't even ask. I don't prompt anyone to tell me a joke. So this has been quite fun, but one of the ones that sort of cracked me up for a couple of days, I think it was Sunday night, um, he messaged me and he said, oh, it was just a random, hi, how are you? Uh, and then he went straight in with, um, have you ever seen a duck fly backwards? And I was like, no, I've never seen a duck fly backwards. He says, how about a shag? <laughs> it still makes me laugh. How lame, God. Um, and then just in case I don't get my next pot out before the 6th of July, The 6th of July is USA Fried Chicken Day, which um, I'm a huge advocate of fried chicken. I will have that any day. It's like my happy like meal, but um, I know probably it's not good for you. And I've been to the States enough to know how they do fried chicken and um, I'm here for it. So if I don't get to yours before the 6th of July, make sure you have, I don't know, fried chicken in some form. It's a it's a day for it. 
and uh, we'll we'll start to get that ball rolling. That's for sure. I've got a couple of shout outs. I know I forget that every now and then, and uh, you know, people are important to me, and I just want to put that across the table that like my friends and my family and support, and if I you know, I'm aware of something happened. I'm definitely going to bring it up because this podcast is reaching so far <laughs> that it's nice to know that you can acknowledge someone. So I want to acknowledge my friend Ben. He just got engaged. He was a really great part of my time with Optus uh, when I lived in Brisbane, not the Sydney Optus. Um, when I first moved into working in the Indra Pili store, he was a Kiwi. So me and him were the token Kiwis. And uh, we had a really great time. I don't think I would have lasted the small amount of time I did in that store because I caught the area managing manager embezzling and had to promptly leave. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where he holds a place in my heart and he had a bit of a sliding doors moment when he was moving back to New Zealand post the pandemic. Um, he was going to go work in central North Island doing, you know, bits and pieces for his dad and, and just chilling out because when you leave insurance, you honestly need like a bit of downtime as your next job. I, I feel like once I leave insurance, I'm going to work a pack and say for six months. But even my boss would say that. She said it quite a few times in the pandemic. Bugger this, I'm sick of working at home. I'm going to go work at Pack and Say, which is a supermarket here in New Zealand. But for him, he went and he worked in central New Ze- uh, Central North Island. And I thought, okay, that's cool. You'll come down to Central Otago and come hang out with me eventually. Like I'm ready for you when you're, you know, present in your mind. Um, and he met a bird, <laughs> a female, um, and ended up going to Thailand and just getting engaged. So. Yeah, he didn't make it down south and he didn't meet any of my wine club girlies and he's now engaged. So massive kudos to you. I'm super proud, Ben, and I expect a wedding invitation or I'll kick in the fire box. Nah, <laughs> he's, a, he's a good egg, this one. So all good. Um, and look, I was gifted a fabulous jar of Gibson Valley raspberry jam. It was solely raspberries off the vine in Gibson Valley and I'm so obsessed in this jam i talked about jam toasties and lo and behold i ended up with a a jar of this delicious no preservative just raspberry jam (laughs) and now i have to fight susan for it because she eats way more toast than i do and i'm like no susan this is meant to go in the uh jam and cheese toasty not jam on toast but anyway (laughs) she does what she wants she's my (laughs) mum. And that's i just want to say a massive thank you for that gift it was super appreciative um and also so uh, my cat, she's 17. Her name's Safi. She's beautiful. Um, she's a runt of the litter, so she's super tiny for her uh, size, I guess you could say. And um, we've been having a bit of trouble with her. She's had hypothyroidism, so she's been on medication for about a year, and it's quite stressful. I don't know if anyone else has an animal on metabolism uh, type of medication, but what I found out is that humans can also consume it. Not that I've started. You'd know because I'd be thin. <laughs> But the vets here in Cromwell, oh, I feel it like I've been fighting to get my cat this medication. Like I, like two months ago, I almost said to them, do you want me to video call you from my house so you can see the cats alive so you'll give me a prescription? This is stupid. <laughs> the more people I told, the more people agreed that, you know, it's like fighting tooth and nail in Cromwell for a decent vet. So the Monday just gone, I actually had to take Saf in for her six month checkups because they do bloods and make sure that her kidneys are working. Like she's old, so I get it. I just hate doing it. I hate putting her in a cage. It's stressful. She clawed the side of my chin and I was like, Oh my god, cat, settle down. <laughs> Where's the catnip? <laughs> but um got into the vet, met this new vet. His name's James. Super like uh oh just the most considerate human being ever. I don't even know he's that old. He he looks really young. I want to know what his skincare regime is. But he was just excessively thorough in making me feel like I had an understanding about what was happening with my cat. And not only did he like clip her toenails and her fingernails, he shaved a hairball that I've been playing with and trying to like get rid of for about six weeks. Um, and he was just really kind and soft with her. And he actually said to me that Safi was his best patient and it was quite early on a Monday morning. So I'm thinking she's only the, she's the first one of the day. So I thought this guy is friggin' cool. And it just made me sort of settle down that, you know, not everyone's out to give the worst treatment to my cat and she can't talk to me. So of course I get like really stressed out when it comes to her well being and, 
if I could, I would definitely would take her back to Queenstown and get her into Arrowtown's Remarkable Vets just because Jeff, he was the one that gave my cat to my mum uh, 17 years ago. And my mum walked into Mitre 10 with this kitten on her, on her shoulder and she was like, we had Jeff the vet at the childcare centre and he was telling us about how someone dumped a box of kittens up Fern Hill and if I wanted to get one. So I thought I'd go get one and surprise you. And well, I burst into tears. I was serving customers at Mitre 10 in Remarks Park. <laughs> but it was so cute. And we named her Safi because she had these big blue eyes and she lost those blue eyes at some stage. They've gone like a real greeny color. But she is just the light of my life. And it was just annoying when we moved to Cromwell half an hour out of Queenstown and I had to change vets I was like it's okay if you're an adult and you have to change doctors like it's not even the nicest process then (laughs) but yeah I just wanted to do a shout out to James at our vet you're a cool guy and I don't even know if you listen to the podcast but just in case you do and you're our podcast man you are awesome um, and lastly, I just wanted to touch on the Cromwell women's rugby team. They were involved in a head-on crash driving back from Dunedin last Saturday. Uh, not the Saturday gone, the Saturday previous. We were actually at the pub waiting for the girls to come back because they were playing uh, in a sort of a finals um, game in Dunedin and they lost. But that's not the point. We're just here for like community support and everything else. So obviously when we heard that there'd been a head-on and uh, it was just it was frightening. I'm not even going to like, um, you know, go into it much more, but to hear this had happened and the mother hen, Paula, who's just like the bee's knees, I adore her. And I, I hope to see her back behind the bar here at Cromwell Rugby Rooms eventually, but please take your time with your recovery. Um, I understand she's still got a couple more surgeries to go. You are missed. You are loved. We, we just want you to get better. Um, but yeah, so I have had a couple of questions as well. <laughs> Someone wanted to know, when do I record the pod? I know that when I say that I'm going to put it out, I probably record it that day because there has been a couple of times where I've recorded it a couple of days in advance and I didn't like just having it sit there and I just thought, oh my gosh, too many things are happening. I need to like add to this. And so I actually hate that. <laughs> Honestly, when I record the pod, it is live that day. So if I say I'm flinging it out on a Wednesday, the Wednesday morning it's being recorded. That's just how I function at the moment. Um, my favorite day of the week goes without saying. It is a Monday. It's just I feel Sunday night is one of those nights where you sleep really well. I don't know if it's just because it's the end of the weekend. Um, and I get up early Monday morning. I can feel everyone like side-eyeing me right now. <laughs> Uh, get up early Monday morning, chuck on the gym gears, get in, get a get a mad workout in and just come home, wash my hair, put on my track pants and my like comfy, 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 soft clothes and just mooch around the house working from home. And I feel like it's a really great start to the week. There has been times I've slept in and I've just been like, oh, I'll stay in bed till eight. Oh, I can't. I struggle. It's the worst. So Monday is my favorite day just for the refreshing side of things. I wouldn't even say Friday, Saturday, Sunday were a favorite day of the week because honestly, it goes as fast as a lunch break. So (laughs) I'm just not here for it. Um, Another question, my biggest fashion fail. Oh, honestly, it's happened really recently. (laughs) I'm not proud of this, but I do own a tan beige tracksuit. And when I say that, like, it's a fail, well, I sometimes wear it. I've had it for a year and a half and I've only started wearing it recently. Mum said to me like a couple of times, I honestly, if I can see you in the corner of my eye, it looks like you're nude on the couch or something. It's freaking me out. So um, it's one of those things where if I come to the gym and then I come home and put my tracksuit on, I have to get changed out of that tracksuit because I can't wear this nude freaking beige tracksuit to the supermarket. <laughs> I have to get changed into something else. And because it's super cold at the moment, well, it's not that bad, but we're getting there. Um, it just ruins my whole day. This tracksuit is consuming my life. <laughs> so my fashion fail is definitely, I have to get rid of this. Um, I just have to wear it heaps so I can get rid of it and be like, well, that's the death of that. Um, the other thing is, is I have been seeing a lot of Facebook and Instagram memories. I'm one of those people that posts um, like throwbacks and 
my other fashion fail would be that in my 20s, I probably was the most disgusting nightclub rat ever and I wore jandals. And all the photos are me dancing on freaking podiums and bars and stuff like Coyote Ugly Styles with jandals on. <laughs> it's so unsanitary. It freaks me out. Oh, my God. Biggest regret. So um, I don't know why people would even let me in wearing jandals. That's like... Ugh. Terrible. The bartenders and security guards just did not give a shit back then. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely call that a foul because the morning after, if I went out in jandals, I'd have to half fill the bath up and add some detail and have an antiseptic bath for my feet. <laughs> Glass and liquor and oh, terrible, terrible. Um, give your 18 year old self some advice. Well, what I'd say is that life gets easier and makes sense the older you get. And I see a lot of it in the younger sort of girlies that are part of uh, my group and that, you know, time's changing, but at the same time, like, you've got to give yourself some breathing space and the pressure when you're in your 20s to make decisions is terrible. If I could say what I knew now to my 18-year-old self, I would just be like, just consume it and absolutely embrace every part of what's coming because there's going to be good times, hard times, tough times, fun times, um, you know, so many trials and tribulations. It's all going to make sense and you're going to pop out the other end and be so much better for it. So have fun. Enjoy your 20s, 18. I don't know. 18 was a hard one. I literally like fell into turning 18, ended up that night at my local pub, fell in love with the bartender and I was in love with the bartender for six years after that. (laughs) So I'm a bad example because, because I was in love with the bartender, we drank a lot of liquor, had a lot of good times, a lot of really big fights. And I was young and naive and I just thought that he was, he was the one. Um, and now I just think, What was I doing? Um, And it even makes me cringe talking to mum about it because she was mostly there. The worst thing was is that how we met this guy. My brother went up the remarkable ski field one morning and he hitched and he actually got a ride with this guy and he came back home at like five o'clock and he says, I got to lift up the mountain with this really cool guy and um, he works at the local pub and I was going to the local pub and I just sort of said to the bartender, you didn't happen to take her a redhead little kid up the ski field, did you? And he says, yeah, Tommy. I says, yeah, it's my brother. <laughs> and then, I don't know, we just clicked and we got on and all of a sudden we were like inseparable for six years. We weren't dating. Um, we would never put a label on it, but we were there for each other. And I don't really, like, I think that's where it screwed me up, to be quite fair. Um, if you won 10 mil, what would you do? <laughs> Well, New Zealand just had 30 mil and I was talking with the uh, Cromwell Rugby Boys on Saturday. They were all buying their tickets at the um, pub and it was quite funny. A lot of them had a lot of really fun ideas, but I'm so set in what I would do with 10 mil. Like 10 mil feels like $10. Um, (laughs) As soon as I win, I actually said to the boys, would you shout the bar? And Every single one of them said, hell yeah, as long as my card doesn't decline, because essentially you haven't got the funds yet. (laughs) But everyone sort of said, you know, travel, buy houses, that kind of thing. I know that I would, I've got two ways of doing it. One is to remove myself from my bubble completely so that I had no reception so I could just think about it. But I feel like as time's gone on, I've actually thought about it and now I'm really like set in it. (laughs) So I would go on a cruise and go off the grid on like no reception, just be out on a boat somewhere. I don't know, 100, 200 days, just go, I don't know, up to America or down to the Caribbean or something, something real random. Um, And then I would take my Cromwell friends to Gold Coast on a private jet. I know one way is $35,000 direct. (laughs) So I want my Aussies and my Cromwells to like all meet together and I want to have a big piss up and just have this real good friend bonding moment because it's been on my mind that, oh, there's like this massive disconnect between my Aussies and my Cromwells (sighs) and I just need them to meet. (laughs) Um, I make my mum, myself and my brother, you know, have really cool houses. Um, I need mine to be under the flight path because that's who I am as a person. (laughs) 
Um, and just, yeah, like, honestly, I think I'll stop there. Oh, I'd probably buy like a Maserati. Maserati has always been my favorite car and like a matte green color, like khaki. Yeah. But I feel like that would be 10 mil done. Easy. Um, one meal for the rest of the year. What would it be? Um, it's funny cause I asked my mom this yesterday and she flat out just randomly said beef stroganoff with a side of herb and, um, potato warm winter salad. And I was like, it's really specific, Susan. <laughs> I actually couldn't choose it, but right now I'm terribly fascinated in this crispy rice, salmon, avocado, sriracha, QP mayo thing that I talked about last time, last pod. Um, I would happily eat that for the rest of the year just because it's really fresh and delicious. But yeah, <laughs> I was like stroganoff and winter salad. Yeah, cool, mum. <laughs> um so if we were sort of, oh, actually, I've got a couple of injuries as well. I've like busted my shoulder and I just went to sit up on the chair and I thought I was going to fall off. Uh, I burnt my finger. I was trying to make um, garlic butter and I put butter in the microwave and I went to take the mug out and the mug burnt my finger. And it's in the most awkward place and I hate it because it won't heal and it's just gross. <laughs> so now I'm wearing a Band-Aid and I hate Band-Aids. They're not cool. And... Third and finally, it all happened in the same day. I was sitting in front of the fire and I went to stoke the fire and didn't realize, but an ember popped out and singed the front of my hoodie. (laughs) So mum comes home and she's like, "Uh, do you realize that your front of your top's melted? And I was like, ah! (laughs) And she's like, how do you not feel fresh air? And I'm like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. (laughs) I'm lucky I didn't get burnt, but it burnt a good hoodie and that was annoying. (laughs) But yeah, um, we thought we'd kick into the July warmer, get your cockles all warmed up. It is a new month. It's month number seven of 12. I know I sort of bleat on about that, but it's a fun way to look at it, really, chapter seven. Um, So we've got a couple of new ideas, and I just want you guys to feel like, you know, this sort of keeps you busy in a sense. So what do we do when we start a new month? I don't know about you guys, but I own a manual toothbrush and an electric toothbrush. I honestly need to ask someone, and I think I've been too embarrassed. An electric toothbrush, when you use it, are you supposed to shut your mouth? Because I'm struggling and I don't know how to use this thing. It's not new, but I just probably don't depend on it as much because I don't know how to use it. I need to go see a dentist and be like, hey, how do you use an electric toothbrush in your mouth? (laughs) So if you use a manual toothbrush or you've got adaptable toothbrush heads, change them. It's a new month. Give your teeth a new, uh, fresh, clean. It'll all be exciting. And that goes without saying, also, if you use a razor in the shower, change them. New blade, new soft, silky skin. Yes. (laughs) We won't go into that because (laughs) let's just leave that there. Uh, Clean bedding. I want everyone to rip their sheets off their bed, chuck on some fabric softener and get those warm and fluffy flannelette sheets out. Yes. Bring on the warmth. Who cares how you sleep? Pull out that horrible woolen blanket that Nana Yetta gave you. (laughs) I don't care. Fact is, we're keeping warm this winter. If you're into that bathroom reset, I'm really big on like Mondays and Fridays to like reset the house. Mum, not so much. She says that she's done it for like 20 years because of me and my brother. And I said, no, you don't do it like I do, Suze. If you're in the bathroom, pull out those products from underneath the sink, do a rotation. What's gone stale? What don't you need anymore? What didn't work? And it's not a hard thing to say, I brought something and now it doesn't work on my skin or it doesn't give me the same satisfaction. Get rid of it. Out with the old and with the new. I don't want to hear about it. (laughs) We are now at the 28th day of the sixth month and I can obviously, I can honestly say I have now used my um, storage supply of shampoo and conditioner. And I know that I said at the start of the year that I actually was actively not going to spend money on stupid stuff this year. And I'm terrible for a bargain. I will honestly buy stupid stuff just because um, for whatever reason, it's I just need it. I don't know. Because I haven't been buying anything, I've had to use my backup supply. And now it's actually finished. And I said to mum, Okay, so now I don't have any shampoo and conditioner left. Oh, the budget doesn't actually cut it for me to buy a shampoo and conditioner. That's another thing. Um, But should I change my brand? Like, should I, you know, I don't know, try a different... I got scared, so I won't do that. (laughs) But, um, yeah, have a wee look through your makeup bag, females. Like, honestly, when you sort of 
don't use makeup that often. And then when you go to use something and it's dried up or it smells funny, get rid of it. It actually, I don't know if you know this, but on the back of most makeup products, there's this little circle with a number in it. It could be like 6, 12 or 24. That's how long from when you open it, how many months you have to use it before it goes off. Take that into consideration when you're going through your makeup bag and actually think, how long have I had this mascara for? Why is it clumping? I know, I'm telling you now, this is why. (laughs) Um, And I want you all to do a brush or a sponge clean. It comes with like the makeup bag stuff. Just clean everything up so that obviously it's like fresh. And I don't want anyone putting old stingy bacteria on their face. It's so gross. So, you know, just do that weed clean. It's just a little idea. I'm just planting the seed. You don't have to, but it makes all the difference. So... Also, bring out the beanies and the gloves, okay? We're doing a rotation for warmer clothes here. I've had a couple of friends come over recently, actually, and I have looked like a bin chicken. I don't care. People hate my slippers. (laughs) People hate, like, nothing matches. I'm wearing, like, seven layers. Right now, I've got thermal pants on and, like, track pants, a hoodie, uh, what do you call these things, Um, slippers. I'm warm as can be, and I'm not even sad about it. I looked terrible (laughs) but no one needs to see me not even the courier man he's not coming here because he's not delivering anything um but no it's great when you can do a rotation and you get rid of those jeans anything cold no track pants and like cargoes um i can't even think about oh i've started wearing like pantyhose and skirts and tights and all those types of like warm woolen things uh i went out for tea last night with the girls and oh I wore this trench coat and it's so heavy and delicious and it's pure wool, but I don't know if I suit it. That's another thing, but we, we'll get to that. Um, I wrote a word down on this notepad, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, if we could move into the things that are making me happy for July, it's the food, obviously. Oh, gosh. It is the time for warm, homely pies. I'm talking shepherd, chicken and leek. Mum brought a leek the other day just because the leek looked beautiful at the supermarket. And now she's standing there thinking, how am I supposed to cook this? I reckon it's going to go off because I don't know how to cook a leek. (laughs) I reckon I'm going to make this chicken and leek pie though and give a good whirl. But I don't know what a leek tastes like. Is it like onion? I don't know. Um, I want you to crank up the slow cookers and do some like really cool pulled meats. I don't care. But at the end of the day... If you use all the stuff in your veggie tray, and I'm not saying we have a lot because vegetables are terribly expensive. If you sort of like do a meal plan and, you know, involve something of a slow cooker, like I sometimes pull chicken with, and it's severely basic, I'm telling you now, a couple of chicken breasts, a tub of like salsa, um, some taco seasoning. And if I pull that in like seven hours, I shred it and then put it in a taco I would literally live off that for like three or four days. Easy, easy. So who cares if you're making um, casseroles and doing all those kinds of things? Add your rice, your polenta, your potato, your couscous. I don't care. The fact is, is that it's now time for slow cookers. Get the most out of like basic meats and root vegetables. Um, And then, you know, I'm moving on from the stock standard like fruit salads and um what do you call them, fruit salads and like eggs on toast and all those kinds of summer breakfast to oats, like baked oats or overnight oats. Um, they even do overnight wheat bix now. So wheat bix is somewhat cheap. Um, <clears throat> and chia pudding. So chia is those little black dots that sort of expand and go gelatinous and fill you up. I feel like right now I'm just on this mad bender for saving money but getting like heaps out of things. And I will... Yeah, I will stretch everything. I'm the worst at like making things go on. Sometimes mum's like, when is this meal going to end? I said, I know, we're on Thursday. I started cooking it on Monday. (laughs) But hey, look, it saves a lot of money. It tastes delicious and I'm not sad about it. Um, And also just finally, teas. Bring out the teapots. Teapots are fun. If you do feel cold and whatever, get a hot water bottle and a cup of tea. You don't even have to have a heater on and all of a sudden you feel warm. There's something about it. I'm not the biggest fan in green tea. Green tea freaks me out. I don't know why. (laughs) But I've sort of started getting into like flavoured teas, but not with your basic milk or sugar. Um, I'm talking like Rocky Road with vanilla soy milk or Mulberry Ripple, which is a tea too, which is just like a fruit tea. But 
I could have teapots and teapots and teapots of this stuff. And it's basic, it's cheap, and it keeps me warm. Makes me pee a lot, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> if you are into that kind of thing, I just want to remind you, tea is a great alternative to water. And, you know, the older we get, the more we get into it, I suppose. Also, just uh, on that note, skincare, it is something we need to look at when we are in dry, cooler climates, like we are in central Otago. Heavier night creams, like that just sort of give all the mu- uh, moisture back. Uh, and also, I know I bleat on about night creams. I feel like night creams are my jam because, oh, look, right now the budget doesn't stretch to my night cream and I'm salty about it. <laughs> That's probably what it is. I actually like have two night creams on the go at the moment and I'm sort of stretching it out. And I said to someone the other day, it doesn't matter. I'm sort of going every second night with night cream now. <laughs> but I reckon as soon as I get to Australia, I'll go straight to like, I don't know, a Mecca or whatever and just buy Australia currency night cream or whatever. Um, But yeah, make sure that in the day, even though the sun's not out, you've still got like a day cream on or something that's holding that moisture in because my my hands, my lips and my mouth, my like skin overall is super dry at the moment. And we go through these weird phases with what the weather does to us. And I just want everyone to glow like. Look after yourself. It's super easy. And I just want to plant that seed as well. (laughs) So, I mean, there was a couple of sort of bits and pieces there for you to take away and and get thinking about it. So, I don't know. Do what you can. um, Set yourself up. Do that rotation um, of products and everything else. And let me know how you get on if you need a bit of advice on anything. I know that this weekend I will be doing a few things myself. Um, Just I'm looking at my sheets now and I'm like, do I only own one set of winter sheets? Like, that's not in the budget. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, let's just do this and do it well, eh? Uh, my wine of the week, well, I only had one or two uh, wines in that small time that I, between Friday just gone and now. This Five Stags, where we, it's a local, um, they had a rosé called the Nevis Bluff. It was there all through summer and it was like $9 a glass. Um, <laughs> so when I was there on Friday, just gone, they were trying to get rid of it. <laughs> so I probably had almost two bottles. Um, and it's not my favourite. It's this terrible, stupid red colour. It's not even rosé. Uh, and... I'd probably give it like a 6 out of 10. I'm glad it's gone because it was annoying me. I had to, ugh, I don't know why I brought it every time, but now it's gone. So now they popped me on the Ned Rosé, which I will probably say is like a basic 8 out of 10. It's just easy to drink, fun. I was drinking it with the rugby boys, uh, watching the Super Rugby finale, the Chiefs' first Crusaders. I had most of the team sort of hovering around me, watching the game over me, but I was sitting there drinking Rosé, living my best life. <laughs> not sad um i actually had a a person come up to me a couple of days ago and say uh some really great sort of feedback to me and basically uh, it's been playing on my mind and i'm really appreciative of this but they stated that always something to there's always something special to take away from someone else's story and i don't feel like i've even had a chance to tell my story because um, it's hard when you talk by yourself on a microphone Sometimes you kind of need like your friends or people to trigger you into reminding you of different things. So this is only like the start and we're only 14 pods in. And I know that sounds like heaps, but I have so much to give and contribute. And I'm even thinking about packing my microphone to Australia because even if they don't come over here and we're all sort of hoping out that they will, all my friends are so like just chatty and they will just bring out the stories that you all want to hear that I just get a little bit shy to talk about. But I, they are there and I will tell you, as I promise. But to hear that someone thought that there was something special to take away from what I'm doing, love that. Oh, my gosh. So appreciative. Um, So oh, I think I'm going to come into the end here, but... <laughs> We do have snow coming. Our inversion cloud cracked the other day on Sunday. We didn't know what was going on. It was like sun all of a sudden. I was like, oh, my gosh, get outside. Put your bathers on. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> but um, we do have a like a snow front, and I'm really excited. I love weather events because the ones that sort of sit you down and all you can do is watch movies and light the fire and just eat good food and drink wine, I that's my favorite. I am actually like going to tell you right here, right now, I love winter. 
<laughs> I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm really happy at the moment. I'm really, really in a good place and I just am embracing everything. So just the goats update, the Cromwell goats took on Alex. I actually wasn't going to the game on Saturday. I was, it was 12.30, I was lying in bed watching a movie. I Well, it was the first time I could actually sleep in and appreciate my new mattress um, and all of a sudden I got a text message, yo, do you want to go to Alexandra and watch the boys? I was like, can't say no. I actually thought, well, if I leave Cromwell and go to Alex, then I am getting away from this inversion cloud. So there was potential I could see sun and I kind of needed it. It was almost three weeks. So we went over, they got absolutely thrashed, but in their defense, that wasn't their normal team. So it's okay, but there was a lot of anger and sadness and oh, they lost. It was terrible, but there was a broken ankle and it was just really unfortunate. <laughs> when the broken ankle happened, the clouds parted, like they opened and everyone got blinded by the sun. I personally felt like Edward from Twilight with glitter skin. <laughs> I was like, what is this on my skin? Like I'm freaking out. Um, and so, yeah, look, I just wanted to be there for the team morale and, and not much of the team stayed in the club rooms to see the whole thing through. And obviously it's it's a big part of the whole process. They play the game, they eat the food, they drink a couple of drinks and you just have a bit of, I don't know, downtime debriefing with them. They didn't stick around. That's how mad they were. There was a, this un, sort of equal uh, referee that I don't even know what side I was standing on, if it was Alex or Cromwell's side, because I was confused. I'd never been to that Alex ground before. <laughs> Um, but the referee was was not being equal, so there was a bit of anger behind that. Um, but it's okay. I actually I saw a uh, nutritionist on Monday, and I was just kind of inquiring about a couple of things. And I sort of <laughs> it's kind of it's really crazy. I know that obviously females. Well, no, because my best mate drinks heaps of beer. Um, my nutritionist basically advised me that I should stop drinking beer because it's a wild fact that female hormones consume beer like differently, but also we can accumulate a dad bod if we drink too much beer. <laughs> um, so the hormones converge into estrogen and the female hormone will convert into testosterone. It messes with our body shape, which cracked me up because I was like, yeah, I do feel like a bit of a like bloated worm at the best of times. And so this, the guidance from the nutritionist was really interesting. Um, she even, I just, I'm only saying this out of like complete off the cuff. It's not, you know, directed at anyone, um, but also our blood. Our blood plays a huge part in understanding uh, inflammation and all those types of things. So I found out that if you have like O, neg o blood, um, it's an inflammatory blood that you should cut bread out of your diet. And if you're A blood, you should really, really consume, like you actually shouldn't really consume meat. Um, I'm yet to sort of investigate A, B and B blood types, but those it's so wild to think that your blood is actually contributing factors to inflammatory parts of your body. And I don't know. It's it's all these different components that are making up um, a better understanding. And I feel like I'm investigating it because I'm only getting older. My mum, when I moved back from Australia, I had all these like wild health facts and she started doing different things. And all of a sudden she was like, oh, that's really great. Like that works for me. And so me seeing a nutritionist um, and having those types of conversations about females and hormones and you know, as you get older, what do you need to do to top things up? Because the deficiency that starts happening, um, it, it won't be happening in your 30s as much as in your 40s. But I'm wildly aware that I can do something about different side effects. And I just sort of wanted to share that with you that um, it will be something that I continue with and I do investigate further because not only am I like 28 days into the 28-day uh, Pilates challenge, I feel phenomenal. <laughs> I can't even stress that enough. It's been eight weeks since I sort of kicked it up a notch. You know, I was sober for two weeks. I was doing like way more exercise. My Garmin watch the other day told me my average steps a day is 8,000, which is literally increased from 1,500. 1,500. I last time, this time last year, I was doing terribly um, mentally. I was really sluggish and I sort of let myself go lost myself there for a little bit. I just had no motivation, didn't want to like be a part of anything. 
now I'm finding out about all the things that are super important for my body to function, but also I'm in a really good, strong place and it's not a weight um, goal as such. I don't believe that that's important. What's important is my cardiovascular health and how I'm doing, you know, overall. So, yeah, <laughs> there's so many components and I'm so proud of myself. But, um, yeah, it's I just wanted to contribute that to my podcast. And I want to look back on this in a year and be like, yeah, girl, you did that. It took eight weeks, but you like consistency paid off. And people are seeing mad differences in the way that I look. And I didn't even go to a best friend's birthday on Saturday because I don't know, just drinking at a house party just wasn't where I was mentally. Um, I was more struggling with just like ugh, multiple things, but I thought because the last week, and I know this sounds terrible, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Unfortunately, that submarine, that stupid submersible consumed me last week. Like I was kind of stressed out for the passengers, but I was barely sleeping. I just wanted to like roll over check my phone and see that they were found and everything was safe. It was annoying um, that I was tired and I wasn't coping with a lot of things. And when you are tired and everything feels like it's compounded, then you struggle. And so I took Saturday, Sunday to just rest. And even though I went out to watch the rugby, I, I was home by, I don't know, 9 p.m. Um, watched the final at the pub with all the boys. It, that filled my cup. I didn't need to continue drinking. I came home, had a burger, went to bed and got up the next day at like 11 and I was so much better for it. So there's little tiny things that I'm just doing in my day-to-day life that I'm so proud of and I honestly just want everyone that's listening to my podcast to see the success of just consistency and um, support me and I'll support you if I know (laughs) that you're doing something, tell me. Um, But yeah, and in saying that, as we move into July, let's talk about a couple of Netflix and um, Apple TV, just some recommendations. I know I get this quite a lot. I feel like I watch a lot of TV, but I don't in my job. Um, It gets terribly quiet and boring when you work remotely, sort of by yourself. So I do have my... um, iPad on and I am sort of subconsciously watching movies but I'm paying attention to my work because obviously that's most first and foremost priority um but if you're into a, a an interesting documentary I did watch uh, I Love You Maya it's actually like the, I just found out in the news yesterday that the family is suing the hospital for 225 million basically the Russian mother brought her daughter in to this hospital because she had a medical condition where when she touched her daughter, it felt like um, a stabbing knife, not light as a feather. So there was something wrong, but someone along the line in the hospital, she was terrible. She was like a consultant. She was under the impression the mother was abusing the daughter. So they separated the mother and the daughter. The daughter had to stay in the hospital for 47 days or something like that. It was quite a long time. And um, the mother wasn't allowed to see her daughter. She could only call when they had to record the calls. It was terrible. Um, And the mother ended up killing herself because it was all too much. And, of course, any mother would – I'm not saying go as far as that, but it was a terrible time. And they want justice from the hospital because there was no abuse. It was stated in all the facts that there was never abuse by the mother. So the fact that it sort of had to come to that was just terrible. And I hope they get justice. Honestly, September 11 is when the hearing happens. I will be tuning in. (laughs) I'm just one of those people that's. I need to see, you know, a conclusion. But um, I Love You, Maya, on Netflix, a beautiful one and a half hour sort of, it's just, I don't know, the way that they talk about this, there's not a lot of anger. I was infuriated, but the family is just beautiful. Um, Black Mirror, I will pop in there, season three. Uh, I think it's the first episode of season three. It's a great episode. Black Mirror came back again. It's this really cool TV show. There's uh, six seasons, and I think there's probably like three or four episodes a season. You can watch anything, and there's no trail on to the next episode. It is just that episode is about that thing. Um, the way The reason I say season three, episode one, I think it is, That episode is chaos and it's a really great starting point because it's it's sort of like based on like loosely 
futuristic things. Um, like this episode in, uh, in particular, everyone's born with a, a score of like say a hundred or whatever. And say if you get a speeding ticket, your score comes down like to ninety, or you like lose ten points or whatever. As you do poorer and poorer through life, as you get older, <laughs> you start to not be able to do things, and it gets really wild really fast. Like take for example, the chick tries to board a plane, and because her score her social score isn't above like 50, she's actually not allowed to board the plane. I just think that whole thing's wild. Imagine if you couldn't do something because you were like naughty in your 20s. <laughs> Mate, I wouldn't be allowed to do half the shit I've done. <laughs> but it's a really great sort of TV show. None of the um, episodes make any sense, but they do sort of plant ideas in your head about the future and technology and everything else. So Highly recommend that one. Um, I started to watch Last Night in Soho. It is a really weird two-hour movie. I didn't finish it. Um, I don't know. I can see why it would be quite entertaining, but I just didn't get into it. But I thought I'd mention it anyway. And another little sort of side note TV show is the one on Netflix called Old Enough. It's three-year-olds that do adult tasks, and it is hysterical. I made mum watch it because she's a childcare sort of person. And this like three-year-old boy had to go to the supermarket with ten dollars and get some flowers and some meat, and then on the way home he had to stop for eggs, and he got lost. And my like heart was racing, and Mum was pacing around the house. <laughs> it was so cute. Um, so yeah, if you want a really good laugh, old enough with the three-year-olds, there's something fun about kids, man. Kids, I, I would love the ones that like are kids and uh, ninety-year-olds in like retirement homes. You know, old and young is great. It's us in the middle that ruin things. <laughs> <laughs> um, last night I finished City on Fire on Apple TV 10 out of 10 I cried Six epi- 7 episodes 6 episodes it was ah, oh, just so good and it's so nice to come into a TV show that's like got twists and turns and heaps of drama and just oh I took away so much from it I'm actually going to get my, make mum sit down and watch it because I really enjoyed it and she will too if you've got um, Sky TV uh, and Just Like That from Sex in the City is back, uh, it's the four girls, except Samantha is technically meant to be in it, but I don't know if she is really. I think it's just a phone call or whatever. I am part of the Sex in the City generation. I know that there's like, uh, what do you call it, Gossip Girl generation, and um, I can't think of that. Um no, I can't think of the one. Uh, I'm the go- I'm the Sex in the City gen, and uh, I don't know. It's hard when you watch the first sort of couple of seasons of Sex in the City as like an older, more recent type person, because that stuff just seems really invalid. I mean, they go through life dating without mobile phones and everything, and it's so basic. Um, so to bring back the other side of the TV show that's more recent and more. Uh, relevant to us I am here for it and Kerry who she keeps wearing fashion from what she wore when she was in the tv show Sex and City from like the 90s and oh it's just so good even like my mum got into it and she was just like this is so cool like I don't know it's back so I just thought I'd mention it if you've got Sky TV it is on HBO um it's called And Just Like That which is one of my favorite things right now. So settle in for July. I will do another podcast very, very soon, but I just wanted to get this out to you guys before um, Saturday. I want you to have a really great, warm, comforting month and do, you know, the best that you can, but also like just take it super easy. Who cares? No one's in any hurry. Um, and appreciate all the things. <laughs> be cozy, be comfortable. Until the next time, take care, and I will record another one soon. Bye.